And we're back for episode 35 of season two. It's a big show this week, and I'm first joined today by Jet from Jet MDK. Go check out his YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us, Jet. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Jet, you have a big NASCAR YouTube channel. How excited for the season are you? Very excited. Um, I will say this is the most excited I think I've ever been for a NASCAR season, to be honest. So many things happening, new cars, new tracks, new teams, just a lot of new. And with the anticipation of the next gen next year, there's a lot of things to look forward to in uh, 2021. Let's start off with this. Is there a good chance that Denny Hamlin wins his third straight race at Daytona this week? I, I will say yes, uh, mainly because, I mean, Hamlin, he has been super strong ever since they came out with this new package with the tapered spacer. Uh, he has just been the best driver overall, at both Daytona and Talladega. And I believe last year he had an average average finish of like two point something on both racetracks. So uh, there's certainly a good chance. I believe he could go three in a row, but then again, it is Daytona and anything can happen. So I'm not going to put a definite yes, but I do believe he has a strong, a strong chance of going three in a row. What dark horse do you think could win the great American race this week? I would look at Bubba Wallace, you know, uh, when he was at Richard Penn in most sports last year, he was up front. He was in contention for the lead. I think at Talladega, he led, I think, with around 14, 15 laps ago. At Daytona, he was leading with just five or six laps ago before being caught up in that crash. But it was not that bad of a, of a super speedway racer. So, And I think with the team, that 2311 Racing and the partnership they got with Joe Gibbs, you know, I think he's going to be a driver that a lot of people might not expect to be in contention. Speaking of Bubba Wallace, how well does he do with his new team this season? Um, I'm not going to be one of those people that, you know, think like they're going to be in contention for the championship. You know, I do think they've got the resources, but they're still a brand new cup team. You know, I think that's one thing we have to understand. It uh, doesn't matter how many stuff, how much resources you have, you're still starting out fresh. So because of that, I think they're going to make it into the playoffs. Um, I fully believe that. Do I think they're going to win a race? Maybe one. And I think it's going to come on the super speedways. But I do believe they're going to make the playoffs and I think finish top 12 in points. That, to me, that's my expectation level for this team. They got the resources, but I think it's going to take some time for them to start developing to becoming a race winning team. Um, your thoughts on Ty Dillon driving Bubba Wallace's car at the Clash? Um, I understand why they went with Ty Dillon because, I mean, he was one of the few drivers, I believe, that was open and eligible for the clash. But, I mean, I don't see anything wrong. I don't – I just – I don't know what to say about Ty Dillon. You know, um, he did lead some laps at the Charlotte Roval due to pit strategy, I think, going out on slicks while everyone else was still on wets. Um, but as for Ty Dillon as a road racer, I don't know if he's going to perform that well. To be fair, he hasn't had the equipment to perform, but – I think he's a type of driver that I think if in the equipment that 2311 racing has right now, he might do something about it, but I can't really say for sure what he will do in the clash on Tuesday. Kyle Larson is back in NASCAR. How well does he perform this year for his new team, Hendrick Motorsports? Well, um, I think I have to understand, first of all, on Hendrick Motorsports as a whole, you know, like even though yes, Chase Elliott, he is the champion. When you take a look at his teammates, they were not at his level. I think the closest was probably Alex Bowman and Bowman made it to the round of eight, I believe. But I think with Larson, again, he's been out of the car since April. You know, he's going to go in there, you know, inexperienced compared to the other drivers. So, around the same boat, I believe, as Bubba Wallace. I think just making it into the playoffs. I don't think he's going to win a race. If so, maybe on the dirt, the Bristol dirt. I think that's his best chance of winning. Uh, but I think he's going to make it into the playoffs, top 10 in points. You know, I think that's that's the expectation level I have for Larson this season. Nothing spectacular, but also not lagging behind. Who do you like winning the Daytona 500 this year? I'll be honest. I like the Penske drivers of Kozlowski and Logano. Um, Kozlowski, even though he hasn't had that much success at the Super Speedways as of late, he knows how to win there. Um, he won Daytona in July. Joe Logano, a past 500 champion, and he's been extremely aggressive on the super speedways if he doesn't crash he is for sure going to be a factor in this win or in this race so i'm gonna lean towards logano right now just because even though he has crashed he has always been up towards the front if he can make it to the finish i think he might have a shot 
your prediction on which driver do you think will struggle the most this year at Daytona? I have a, I have a struggle. I guess it's really tough because we don't know, you know, the speed. We don't know how the cars perform, but I, I believe, I think, to be honest, I'm going to go with Kevin Harvick. You know, I don't know something about with Kevin Harvick. He's been, he knows how to run well on any type of racetrack, but when it comes to the super speedways, I could be wrong, but he's just not been there. He's not been able to be in contention. He's always mired in the middle of the pack, you know, not being a force to be reckoned with when it comes to the ending of these super speedway races. Um, and I think that trend is going to continue. He could break out and have a really good speed week, but based on previous trends, I think I have Harvick uh, struggling uh, Daytona. Speaking of Kevin Harvick, why did he struggle late last season in the playoffs? Because he dominated in the regular season. I'll be honest. I'm still uh, can't believe he didn't make it. I don't. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think he had an average finish of what eight point something, and to not win the championship that is rem- that is incredible. Um, but I think that race at Texas that's what started this downfall. I think um, him having a horrible run at Texas and then another horrible run at Martinsville. On top of that. His competitors are out there scoring stage points, top fives, and Chase Elliott won the race. I think all of that, just two bad races, is all it takes for you to be knocked out of this thing. Doesn't matter how good you are. Um, but I think, you know, and I think you might be asking like a follow up question on how he might do this season. Um, I think he he's just. I think Harvick's the type of guy that he's going to get over this, start the new season fresh, clean slate, focus on the 2021 championship. I don't think. What happened last year is going to affect him. I don't think the team is going to, you know, have that sort of that uh, that the ending of last year hung over to this season. They're going to have a clear mind, and I think they're going to be A-OK for 2021. Could Chase Elliott win back-to-back cups this season? Yes, because of the road courses. I mean, <laughs> we got seven in the schedule, I believe, and we know how dominating Chase Elliott has been on the road courses. Um, and he hasn't been he hasn't been that bad. Even with Hendrick Motorsports, they have, they're not up there, I believe, with Gibbs and Penske. He has been a really good driver in terms of stats-wise last year. doesn't matter if it's Speedway, Short Track. He has been up towards the front. I think that's going to continue on to 2021, but he's going to have a lot more pressure because now you're the defending champion. You got, you know, you don't want to make sure that people would think that your championship was a fluke. You want to prove that, hey, I am a real champion. I'm going to defend my title. Um, and I believe that with the schedule and how it's structured is structured to chase Elliott's liking, you know, the short tracks and the road courses that are on that are in the playoffs fits to him perfectly. So I do believe he has a great shot of going back to back. Before I let you go. And once again, thanks for coming on jet. Who do you have winning the cup at the end of the season in the cup, man, this is going to sound like a broken record, but I got to go with Hamlin. I mean, Oh man, this is what four or five times I think Hamlin's been in contention and he has always uh, missed it just by just by a little bit. I think with this high downforce package, you know, again, with how the season is structured, I think it also fits to Hamlin's liking. He has run really good on the mile and a half, so has run really good on the two milers, also run good on the short tracks the past two seasons, you know. So I don't see a reason as to why Hamlin, he's still going to be a favorite. I do believe he's going to win the championship, but I mean, I don't know when you, when you make it to the championship four, three or four times and you still don't win it. I don't know. It's that's, that's, it's just kind of tough pill to swallow really. Well, gotta go. Thanks for joining us, Jet. And whoever is listening right now, don't forget to subscribe to his channel. Man, you too.